Hi, my name is Brooke Williams, and I'm one of the Go Center mentors at Richland High School. And today I want to talk about time management. Um, I have been feeling like it would be valuable to start sharing with the students to start uh, making some YouTube videos that are focused on some of the challenges that uh, I'm commonly seeing students facing um, as we adjust to this virtual mode of learning um, and this and all of the social distant um, isolated time uh, where we're starting to feel restless and we're starting to feel um, kind of stuck in the cycle and maybe we're having a hard time um, prioritizing tasks maybe we're having a hard time studying staying motivated um, and, and prioritizing things so um, I wanted to actually take this PowerPoint, this presentation that I give to my class at UTA. I teach a, a student success course at UTA, the Unit 1131 course, and this course is designated for first time in college students um, to help them get acclimated both in their major um, and in, uh, in, in campus life at UTA, um, and just helping them get a good, uh, a good start to their collegiate career. Um, and this is one of my favorite presentations that we do in class because it is something that is so valuable um, to have as a skill um, and something that can be so helpful if really put into practice. So I thought I would start sharing some of these PowerPoints that I talk about with, with my class with y'all um, that I think might be able to help you kind of get a grasp on some of these difficult challenges um, and changes that you're facing during this time. Um, so again, we're going to be talking about some time management skills today, um, ways that you can uh, start implementing better practices into your day-to-day -day routine, as well as um, just addressing some of the common pitfalls that we see um, students finding themselves in, in, in these time management errors. So first of all, we want to be able to recognize what effective time management is. And this is being able to schedule all of your responsibilities um, ahead of time and prioritizing these tasks. So, um, and this is on a, a daily, weekly, monthly, semester, annual uh, basis. Um, and if you are able to have a, a good grasp of you know, what is expected of you, um, the responsibilities that you have at hand and being able to prioritize those, um, then uh, you'll be able to be seen as effectively managing your time. And so this is kind of what uh, the goal um, is by the end of this, is for you to be able to understand and practice effective time management. So where do we start with this? Um, well, the first place I kind of uh, like to start is, is by prioritizing your tasks and by finding motivation to complete your tasks. Um, these are two pretty central problems with time management that are there's these kind of like confounding variables. Um, they don't really have to do with uh, how you're scheduling, um, but they play a big role in actually following through with time management. So you want to prioritize your goals um, and you also want to be motivated um, for, for your tasks and for your goals um, in order to uh, complete things that you need to complete, right? So it, one way of looking at it is kind of through this lens of the productivity pyramid. Everything we do, um, everything we choose to do is kind of built off of our values, right? So we create long-term and short-term goals that reflect our values, and then we complete our daily tasks in order to achieve those goals. Pretty simple. But as you're going through your day-to-day -day and you're in these classes uh, that you might not care about, and um, you know, you're, you're tired and you're worn out, and uh, you, you work, and there, now there's college admissions, essays, and all of these things, right? And it just starts to feel overwhelming and you're already restless, it can be hard to, to, to remember why you're doing it. And so when it comes to prioritizing your tasks, prioritizing the things that you're doing um, and finding the motivation, if you can, 
think back, if you can find, take a minute and ground yourself in why you're doing what you're doing, this might in turn help motivate you. As a personal example, um, I would say my junior year in college was my hardest one. It was because I was in my hardest classes and my life was kind of rough at the time. And so there were a lot of moments <laughs> where I just wanted to stop. I just wanted to quit. I just wanted to lay in bed all day and not do anything and, and not um, you know, work on the things that were expected of me to work on. And I, but I had to take a minute and sit there and think, you know, Brooke, why, why are you here? Why am I doing this? Why have I already dedicated the time, money, energy that I have dedicated um, into doing this? And, you know, I think about the career I want. I think about um, the GPA I need to have. I think about uh, the scholarships I could apply for. And I know that, you know, while right now this might seem like a little task, uh, you know, completing this essay or uh, doing my day's work, you know, everything snowballs into a bigger thing, right? So one bad assignment, one bad grade, one missing um, quiz snowballs into a bigger effect on, um, you know, either my grade in a course, um, the uh, recommendation I could get from a, from a boss or a supervisor if I'm not doing my work adequately, um, which then affects my ability to achieve my short-term goals, which then affects my ability to achieve my long-term goals, which doesn't reflect the values I have for my life. And then it's gonna cause me a lot of cognitive discomfort. Um, so kind of having to think through that process helps put me back in the track of, okay, I know why I'm here. I know why I'm doing this. If I can just push through, you know, this is gonna help me in the long run. And that has been something that is just another route to find some kind of internal motivation when, it, when it's everywhere else, it's, I'm having a hard time finding it. Um, and so if you find yourself kind of stuck in this rut of like, oh, I just, I don't want to do this. I, I'm so unmotivated right now. Um, take a step back and try and look through this lens of, of this productivity pyramid, right? Like know that your daily tasks, things that you're doing right now, um, as annoying and tedious as they might be, um, are gonna affect the short-term goals you have in place, which are gonna affect those long-term goals that you have in place, which are gonna affect your values. Uh, how they reflect your values and how you feel in the long run and you don't want to end up looking back later and being like oh man you know I know it was rough then because I promise it'll happen I mean I was a senior kind of graduating high school once I, and I've been through college and you know I remember thinking at the time like oh I do not want to write another I do not want to write a scholarship essay I do not want to write another college admissions essay and I remember looking back being like what was 30, 45 more minutes of my life right then? And, and what different position could I be in had I just done it? Had I just thought about what I really wanted? And so this mindset, if you can start getting into this mindset, this is something that can really, really help you um, in how you're completing your tasks um, and, and what you're putting before them. Is it uh, scrolling through TikTok for hours because that can get dangerous, right? <laughs> um, is it watching Netflix? Is it going out with your friends um, instead of instead of studying, instead of completing this uh, item? Or is it all work and, and no self care? Um, and, and it can be flip flopped if you're if you're over scheduling yourself, right? So this is kind of how you're wanting to look at it. So. What are some of the problems, you know, past this? Let's say we have the motivation, but we still find ourselves not really completing things on time or 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 well enough, right? So what are these pro pro problems that we come across? A big one is procrastination. Um, and there are all sorts of different types of procrastinators out there. I've listed three that I've, I commonly, I commonly um, come across. But when we procrastinate and we put things off, um, you know, we wait to the last minute, you can have the best looking color coded, beautiful planner um, and still end up waiting to the last minute because you have procrastinated and, and, and pushed it off, right? So we need to find, you know, how to avoid these problems. Well, first you need to identify what kind of procrastinator you are. Um, and the three that I have listed here is productive procrastinator, overwhelmed procrastinator, and the perfectionist procrastinator. Um, your productive procrastinator 
you might be like, oh, well, um, maybe sitting around and doing nothing, uh, you know, oh, I can't do that. So you don't want to do this paper, but you do need to do your laundry. And so you do your laundry and you feel like you are completing things and you're being productive um, and you're getting things done. But is it the thing that you really need to get done right then? Uh, can your laundry wait another day um, and instead work on this paper that's due, you know, tomorrow, right? Um, so productive procrastinators have the problem of prioritizing tasks and working on them when they need to be completed. Um, and I, I fall into this category a lot of the time where I will end up cleaning my entire apartment, even down to giving my cat a bath, which is miserable. If you have a cat, you know what I'm talking about. Um, instead of, you know, writing the term paper I, I, I didn't want to write. Um, there's also the overwhelmed procrastinator, and this is a pretty common one, um, where you end up doing nothing because there is just so much on your plate, you can't even begin to look at it. Um, and looking at it gives you a lot of anxiety and you just sit there and kind of like stew in that anxiety and just keep pushing it away. Um, and, and the overwhelmed procrastinator tends to come across the problem of breaking, um, take, you know, taking uh, bites that are too big to chew, right? So they have a problem of breaking up big tasks demanding tasks or breaking up their schedule in a way that it's digestible. Um, and then you have your per perfectionist procrastinator, which is focusing on one aspect of an assignment and failing to complete the rest. And this is like this SpongeBob GIF, GIF, whichever way you say it over here on this slide. Um, and I also fall into this category a lot of the time where you focus on one part of it, like the, the beautiful the in the beginning of um, this uh, the SpongeBob gif over here, um, and then it's like, okay, time for a break because I've spent an hour working on this. But how much did you actually get done within that hour? Uh, did you focus on on one tiny part of this assignment and and really didn't dive into the meat of it because you were putting that off? Um, and this again can kind of fall into um, the the timing that you are allotting yourself um, with a project. So maybe this is project planning. Um, you're having errors breaking down um, a project and giving yourself um, boundaries to stay within. Um, so if you're able to identify and, and be honest with yourself about what kind of procrastinator you are, because we're, we're all at least one of them, and there's more that are listed than are listed here. Um, but if you're able to identify that and, and honestly um, tell yourself, you know, I have a problem doing this, um, then you're able to kind of work to avoid that. Um, and that's kind of how you're going to get around this. So if you're the productive procrastinator, um, schedule your miscellaneous tasks to be done before you want to start completing the things you need to start working on. So if you know you have, you want to work all, uh, you know, all week on these projects, well, then that weekend, don't allow there to be anything else to distract you from the task at hand, right? So do all of your laundry over the weekend, make, you know, clean your room, bathe your cat, whatever it is, right? So there's nothing else whenever you sit down and it's time to start working on what you might not really want to work on, there's nothing else to take that time away from you. And all of that time is dedicated to actually completing what you need to complete. If you're the overwhelmed procrastinator, um, then the best thing for you to do is might make like a take your semester calendar or, or look at all of the um, assignments that you have at hand. Uh, in college, it's a little easier because you tend to have course calendars. If your high school teachers don't provide you with course calendars, then maybe you can do it a week at a time. Um, but look at all of the major assignments that you have that are due um, whenever you have exams, all of that, and write it down into one big calendar. And then start scheduling how to work on each assignment a little bit at a time. So while you might be doing something, you know, every day of the of the work week, you only you only might have to do just a little bit each day. Um, and so that's a little bit more digestible for you. You're not having to spend hours and hours at a time working on something because you've pushed it all, you know, to where you do it all at the same time. Maybe you finished a few assignments a week early, so you have time to complete other assignments that you have to do the same week um, later on. And if you're the perfectionist, 
Um, then if, if you have like a big project you need to be working on and you spend so much time only working on the title, well then a good thing for you might, to, uh, a good thing that uh, you could do is, is break down the project, right? Day by day or task by task, uh, give yourself uh, your own due dates for each part of the project. When do you wanna have this part of the assignment done by? When is this part of the assignment need to be done by? Um, and, and hold yourself accountable to your own due dates. And these are the kind of ways you can kind of work around where you're finding yourself procrastinating. Um, and especially now we're coming across other distractions outside of procrastination, like internal distract, I mean, external distractions, um, especially those learning and working from home. The amount of distractions that we are around uh, now is so much different than whenever we were in class uh, or whenever we were in work. Um, because you can't really control everything from home, especially if you have roommates, especially if you um, live with your family, um, especially if you share a room with siblings or with someone else, right? So how are we going to work around distractions and, and stay focused? Well, the best thing to do is to take a survey um, of what are the main distractions that you come across? Um, and then try and work, again, identify and avoid. Try and identify what they are and then work to avoid them. If you know uh, the times during the day where it's the loudest in your, in your home environment or wherever you're working, um, then maybe try and find somewhere outside, a local library or work um, outside of those really kind of loud hours. Um, you can ask your family or roommates if they wouldn't mind you know, giving you from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, of just kind of some quiet time so you can complete what you need to complete as well. Um, turning your phone off, deleting social media. I took, um, whenever I was really struggling with um, being at home and working from home and getting distracted on my phone because I'm in my comfort place, I would move, I would have a designated area where work was done and my phone wasn't allowed there. And I deleted social media during the work week. Um, and of course, I was really strict on myself, but that's because I was struggling really bad with getting lost with all of the external distractions that were happening. And before I'd sit down, I'd make sure that my room was the right temperature. I had socks on, I, I had eaten, I had gotten my, my drink, I had a snack nearby. So I wasn't having to like constantly have an intrusive thought of, oh, let me get up and do this um, and then end up on my phone. Um, and, and, you know, I, I dip my toe in the interim distractions, such as like eating um, a snack, having a snack, um, having your drink, um, a water, or, you know, soda or a coffee near you or have already, you know, drank something, whatever it is. But, you know, try and take care of your internal distractions as well. And with emotions as an internal distraction, during this time, I know we are all feeling just a lot of the challenges um, that are associated with um, this quarantine um, and with this um, virtual modality of life right now. Um, and, and it can affect us in different ways. Some are really anxious. Some are kind of feeling depressed. Um, some are feeling okay because it hasn't changed their life much. And however you're feeling, um, that's okay. And, and, and it's understood, or it's understood. Wow, understand it. Um, anyways, it's understood. Um, and if you're feeling like you're struggling, talk to somebody. Go to a counselor at your school, talk to your parents, talk to a friend, talk to um, me, a mentor, talk to whoever you feel comfortable with. Um, and, and try and just let someone know, so you know that there's someone there um, in your corner supporting you, listening to you, and there for you. Um, acknowledging and just having someone acknowledge how you're feeling and, and validate that is sometimes what we need, right? So it's hard to avoid emotions. You just kind of can't. Um, and, and in this case, you want to identify your emotions and accept them. So emotions are the one uh, are the one possible problem that doesn't follow the identify and avoid rule. This is where you're going to want to identify and accept and, and maybe reach out.
or relate to me, talk to somebody about um, and try and, and get that under wraps. So when it comes time to work on stuff, it's not all bottled up um, and, and comes out whenever you're the most stressed out. Um, and just some general tips to improve your concentration. Uh, you wanna control whatever attractions you can, um, kind of like we we're just talking about. Find a place that's comfortable for you. Like I had said earlier in my personal example, um, I have a designated place where I do work at home um, and it's a comfortable spot and I have my whole setup um, so make a little setup for yourself. If it's a, a little corner, if you make a little pillow, uh, pillow corner in the room, almost like a little fort, so it just feels kind of nice to sit there. If you like to sit by an open window, so you feel more connected to outside. If you like to go sit outside, uh, if you if there's a coffee shop you love or a public library, whatever it is, find a spot that you're comfortable at, um, and and try and try and go there to give you just some kind of um, relief and, and happiness in, in your environment. And, and practice active learning techniques. Keep yourself engaged. If you've been reading for a long time, then maybe get up and, and write some flashcards or um, take notes or pretend you're giving a lecture over what you just read and, and practice reciting that information. Um, Self-test. Um, active learning techniques are, are one way to help keep you going and keep you um, pushing through those tasks as well. Um, and another thing that you want to do when it comes to uh, time management is um, the factors that go along with uh, planning, right? So you want to know the demands of each task and um, how much goes into um, whatever project you have or whatever assignment, exam, quiz, uh, work thing, you know, what, how demanding is it? Um, how long is it going to take? Are you going to be able to avoid disruptions? And are you able to evaluate your progress? These are things that you're going to want to understand and work on whenever you are, are planning um, your, your schedule um, and whenever you're scheduling out your tasks. Um, these are all things you're going to want to take in, in to, into mind. So if you have a quick homework assignment, if you have a longer project if you have um, maybe something you really don't want to do right um, but isn't super demanding you want to think about all kind of four of these factors and let those help you schedule each task into your week or into your month um, you know if it's a really demanding thing and maybe you want to break it up into multiple days of work if it's a quick thing maybe you want to break it uh, or do it in a, in a, in a break when you're already working so if you have some downtime between class, uh, if you, you know, right after you get done with school, if you can just, while you're still in the mode of learning, just quickly get through this assignment. So the rest of the downtime is your downtime. Um, if you know that you're gonna have a hard time uh, avoiding disruptions, um, are, are you gonna need to break up all of these assignments into, into little digestible bits? That way you can get them done uh, whenever there is the least amount of distractions possible. And by doing all of this, then you're also going to be able to evaluate your progress. Are you scheduling this in a way where you're able to be like, yes, I'm on top of it, or I still don't really know where I'm at, and I don't really know what's demanded of me right now. This is something when it comes, this, is, this hour per class ratio is something that, um, you know, is dedicated for college students primarily, but it's worth sharing. Um, this is what you know. I tell my students: um, it, for every two to three hours um, of credit, uh, you want you want two to three uh, study hours for every hour of credit. So, if you are a full-time student in college, you are at least taking twelve credit hours to be considered full-time. So, twenty-four to thirty-six hours of studying is what you want to be doing in college. And so at the very minimum, if you're in, still in high school right now, then um, know that it's going to be very, very important for you to work on these time management skills now and kind of start getting them foundationalized. That way, whenever you go into your first semester on campus, you're not having to learn all of this now because this is kind of what it's, you're going to have a busy schedule. This is why it's called full-time student, um, not part-time student. 
because there's a lot that goes into it. 24 to 36 hours of studying outside of class. So it's the 12 hours in class and 24 to 36 hours of studying outside of that. And that's what's recommended um, at the bare minimum, right? Um, so if you are a full-time student uh, with at least 36 to 48 hours a week should be dedicated to school, right? So your 12 hours plus 24, 36, so 36 to 48 hours a week is what you should be doing. So if you want to get started on working on these uh, skills right now, um, either if you're struggling already or if you just want to start foundationalizing these skills so whenever you get to college, you're starting off on a really good foot. Um, these are some good tips um, just to kind of help you get started. Uh, semester calendars, um, these are your, you take everything that is uh, going to be due throughout the entire semester, you write it down, uh, and you fill it in a calendar. That way you know exactly what is expected of you. And that can kind of go in with a weekly and monthly planner. Um, you just kind of file, put those together, I guess, mesh them together. You put in everything um, for the semester, um, and then you fill it out on a weekly to monthly basis. Um, there's a five day study plan. This is one of my favorites whenever I have like a final exam or a um, big exam coming up that I'm worried about. Um, I plan uh, five days dedicated to studying for that particular exam. Um, and I break down the studying um, so I know I'm covering all of the material I need to cover and I feel most prepared for my exam. There's the project planner um, and I actually have this template on the picture over here. Um, so you write what the project is, um, what is what is going to define success in this project? You know, what's the rubric say? What are all the components you need to have? What is your overall goal for the project? And then you write your action steps and you make your own deadline for each one. Um, that way you are breaking down the project into digestible bites um, and you're able to complete it in a timely manner. And then you a to-do list. If you just have a lot going on, I like to make little to-do lists. I always have a to-do list, um, a daily to-do list, a weekly to-do list, whatever it is. And I write them in like chronologically due order. So it, whatever is due the soonest is the first on the list. Whatever is due the latest is last on the list. Um, and I kind of do, I just, when I have some downtime and I know I need to start completing it, I just take the first item on the list and I do it right then. Um, so uh, these are hopefully some tips or, or things that you can do to help you get started with working on your time management. And just a tip, make sure that you are planning out free time as well as study time and as well as work time. And um, half the battle with time management um, is not just prioritizing the school and the work uh, responsibilities, but the responsibility you have to yourself. Um, you want to schedule in time to, for self-care, time to make sure that you're feeling like you're valuing yourself, you're valuing your you time and your downtime, because it is important. Um, there isn't anything wrong with watching TV. Um, there isn't anything wrong with uh, taking a long bath or sitting outside and reading a book for fun. Uh, in fact, these things are needed. You need that mental break. You need that time to, to kind of relax, and, and ground yourself in, in an activity that you like to do. Um, so just make sure that you are planning out those, those aspects as well and, and being there for yourself. And if you can effectively time manage, then you're gonna notice you're probably gonna have a lot more free time uh, than, than you do now, because if you're doing little things at a time, then you're, you're allowing yourself more time in the day to dedicate for yourself. Um, and since you're consciously making that decision, um, you're going to recognize it more. Um, and in turn, that's just going to help you feel a lot less stressed. Um, but hopefully these tools um, and, and this PowerPoint gave you um, just a little bit more of a grasp um, and, and confidence in tackling your, your next semester um, or, or your first year in college uh, or just makes you feel a little bit more comfortable um, in this, in this restless and, and challenging time. Um, and be on the lookout for more videos about uh, common challenges that we're facing, um, definitely during COVID, um, and some general tips and tricks that you can use to kind of get you back on your feet.
Um, in the description uh, on this video, I have listed the appointment link for the RHS Go Center, my email, links to our Padlet and social media site as well. Um, so uh, stay in contact with us, uh, schedule an appointment or, or email me if there's any follow up questions or if you would like to me to discuss anything, I'd be more than happy to meet with you. Um, and thanks for watching and uh, happy, happy time managing. <laughs>